Welcome back. In this tutorial we're going to cover advanced ortho number 12, which is our last advanced ortho part. So, asking our questions, does our part have symmetry? It does. Symmetry from front to back. The left side and the right side are not the same, and the top and the bottom are not the same. So, looking at our part, uh, which uh, how would we describe our part? It's kind of a, a U shape with some chamfers and a hole and a curve on the left side. Um, which view best shows the shape of this part? Um, you could do this two ways. You could either do it from the top view or you could do it from the front view. I'm going to show you how to do it from the front view. I think that's a little easier, um, but if you want to try it from the top view after you watch this demo, by all means, be my guest. So to start off with, we are going to draw in our base shape, um, and it's just going to be the 3.19 by 1.5 and then we're going to add this curve with this 0.94 line here. Uh, the chamfers we will take care of later. I want that to be a feature, not a sketched feature. So let's go back to Inventor and we'll start a new part and sketch on the front and we said 3.19, 1.5 tall. Now this is where we start we're wondering what we're going to do here. So we're just going to draw a line, and then we know that this line is 0.94. So we'll clean up our dimensions a little bit. And now we need to look at this curve and what we know about this curve. So what we know about this curve is that it's got a radius of 2. Okay? That tells us right off the bat that the center point of this arc is not here. It can't be here because this is way closer than two inches. This is three quarters of an inch. So the center point has to be down here somewhere, and we're not given that. Um, so let's describe this arc. Where does it start? Where does it stop? So it starts here, 0.94 up off of the left bottom corner. And it comes around until it hits this line here. So what's the relationship between this arc and this line? Those two are tangent to each other. And we know that because there's no line here. If there was no tangency, we would not have a nice blended corner. We would um, A nice blended transition, excuse me. We would have a corner. Down here, we see a line because there is a corner there. So no line equals tangency. So how do we do that in Inventor? Well, I'm going to draw a circle, and I'm going to draw a circle with a diameter of 4. Well, I thought we said it was 2. 2 is the radius. Then I'm going to drag my circle about where I want it. This is about where I want it. So I know that I have a tangency between these two, so I'm going to add that tangent constraint, this circle, to this line, and it's going to pop up. Now let's talk about degrees of freedom and how this thing could move. This can move side to side, not up and down, because it would break that tangent constraint that we put. So what constraint can we use to say that this circle needs to be on this point? That would be a coincident constraint. Coincident constraint between this circle and this point, and it's going to shift it over. I'm going to trim off the rest of my geometry, and now we've gone to fully constrained. Finish sketch. I'm going to extrude that symmetric, and my total length is 1.19 plus 0.53 twice. So I'm going to say 1.19 plus something new parenthesis 0.53 times 2. Now notice that it's red. When you have an incomplete formula or equation, it goes red, and it will go back to black when I close that parenthesis. So when Venner does algebra, it knows to do the parentheses operations first, and then add that sum to the 1.9, or the product. All right, so we hit OK, and we're done with that. What can we do next? That's easy. Well, we can put this hole in here. 
So this hole is 1.24 from the edge and 3 quarters up, and it's a 5 eighths hole. So here we're going to sketch, we're going to put a point down, 1.24 and 3 quarters from the bottom. I'm going to make a hole that is a through all, 0.625, and hit OK. So there's my hole, and if I look here, just to kind of compare, I can see that the quadrant of my circle is a little bit away from this line here. And that is what we've got right there. So that looks good. Next, we're going to add our chamfers. And so these two chamfers on the front and the back are 45 degree angle. So we can add those uh, with a 0.62 distance. So we can add those real quick. 0.62, this corner, and that corner. And then we need a 30 degree chamfer also with the distance of 0.62. So remember we have to do those a little different. So we're going to pick distance and angle. Angle of 30. This is our face, this is our edge, and then we have to repeat on the bottom. This is our face, this is our edge. Again, Inventor holds my values for me, which is nice. Hit OK, and my chamfers are done. Next, I need a hole in here that is 0.56 diameter by 0.5 deep, and that is in the middle of this rectangle. So to do that, I'm going to draw a sketch on here. I'm going to project this face. And then I'm going to draw a line from corner to corner that will find the midpoint of the rectangle, the center of the rectangle by the midpoint of that line. Then I can simply put in my hole, and we said it's a 0.56 diameter. And the distance is 0.5. So there's that. Double check real quick that our hole here goes all the way through everything, which is good. So the last thing we need to do on this part is to draw in the cut shape on the top. So let's take a look at that real quick. So it comes in, bumps in more, and then comes into a corner. So we're going to go ahead and draw that in from here to here. Okay, that should be vertical, and it's not, which is no big deal. We'll go ahead and take care of that with some constraints. And then we need to close this here. So let's throw a vertical constraint on this line. And we'll do some symmetric constraints between projected geometry. Uh, symmetric constraint between these two lines. In this line and these two lines in this line now we just need to put in our dimensions so we've got 1.19 and 0.215 so if we dimension this as 0.215 and this as 1.19 now I need a distance here 2.12 and 0.62 so from here to the edge, 2.12, and this length is 0.62. Go ahead and clean this up a little bit. And the length of this is equal to this. Now we could have solved that also with another symmetric constraint. So if we finish, we've got kind of this T shape, and if we visualize this part, this cut here, if we follow the bottom, is a T-shape. So that's good to go. And I'm going to extrude this as a cut through all. And so that is advanced ortho number 12. Thanks, and we'll see you in the next video.